see how he, see how he feels today. Do you think he'll start, or is that still up in the air? Uh, that would still be up in the air. See how he, see how he does today and tomorrow. It's a good possibility, though. Of course, his wind dad kind of conditioning wise. He didn't do a lot of up and down, so uh, that would be hard to say. You know, he did a lot of a lot of workouts in the pool while he was hurt, so hopefully it'll be it'll be okay. If you look at the Gabe's minutes have skyrocketed since Mike was out of rotation. Is that just because of that, or is it because Andy Gabe? No, I think it's a function of how, how he's played. He, he, you know, he's really played well and you know, deserves more minutes. Uh, when do you think the light? You know, earlier in the year you talked about how Gabe was afraid to make mistakes and he could kind of break through and play through. When do you think that transformation has taken place? I, I, I think he, he's a guy that continues to work hard. He's a guy that really concentrates in practice, puts extra time in, you know, studies the scouting report, watches film, and then little by little he's gotten better in terms of his understanding of everything. And then you know, that is, you look at his athletic ability and the ability to, to guard a small guy, to run down a guy from behind and block a shot. Uh, but he's just more relaxed. He was getting more minutes. The more minutes he gets, we always said if he's given more minutes, he'd probably settle down. Uh, but you know, at some point, you have to settle yourself down to, to get those more those extra minutes. I think that's what he's done. Was it you or Andrew who saw him at sunrise the first time? Looking, at we were both there together. Near there, Sierra, right? Yeah. yeah. Who was it that he jumped out? That jumped out at you when you saw him? I, you know, I, I think the same things that you see in them, and, you know, when you watch me, how many guys run like that? Uh, you know, it was an open gym, and he was, he was dominant, you know, in an open gym, with dunking the ball, riding, blocking shots, you know, catching the ball. You know, in open gyms, you got to be careful. The defense isn't usually what it normally is. There's you know, nobody scheming to stop anybody. It's just kind of up and down. And uh, he was spectacular that day. You know, we went back and watched him in the game. He was very good. Wasn't the same, but was very good. And you could see that he was a guy that I mean, there wasn't any doubt in my mind or Andrews that he was going to be a player. Uh, and you know, you try to do your homework and figure out what kind of person he is. And if you talk to anybody up there. It, they still love him till this day. He's just a delightful person and he's an incredibly hard worker. So you, you, know, you couple all that together and you say, well, you know, this kid can't miss. He mentioned before how uh, you guys went with, talked to him, simplified the game, gave him four different areas to work on and to emphasize. And it seems like that that's kind of been more of his niche now. It, did you get the sense early on that that was just the issue with him and maybe he was overthinking things too much? Well, you know, it's all new to him, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, the sophistication of a scouting report at this level, like you know, how you're playing ball screens and how we're playing the transition, set plays, zone offenses, out of bounds plays, learn the four and the five spot. You know, if you can just let him run and jump and block shots and, you know, play motion, it'd be a little easier for him. But, but that's not what this level is. Mm -hmm. You're going to play a team. It's going to make you think, uh, and it's a fine line. You put him in. If he struggles, his confidence goes down. If he does well, his confidence goes up. So you got to be careful when you use him, how you use him early in his career. And you know, to his credit, he just kept plugging away. And now you, you watch a guy catch the ball in traffic and make a wraparound pass, catch and dunk it quick. Come from behind and block a shot. Come from the inside and block a shot. You know, playing the low post, playing the high post. I mean, he's just so so comfortable right now. And in practice, he's been doing it as well. But he always had you know, that effort. You know, the, the effort was always there. He was always the guy that beats everybody down the floor. He's the guy that runs back. A lot of guys beat you down the floor in offense, but they don't run back. He does both. And that tells you what his character is. How much better are you guys when Devin is playing at the top of his game? Substantially. 
know, he's a guy that you know we know that on any given day is going to get 15 points or better. But he is a guy that distributes the ball to his teammates. He understands. He makes plays late. Uh, he rebounds his position with his size. He's got a good feel for where to be defensively, so he'll make steals. He's got real. He, he, he's got savvy. And, and if you have a guy of his size with his skill set and savvy, and he's playing well, and you, you got something special. Do you think third team for he and Aaron that was justified and fair for what? You know, you need to put that in there, but I mean, you're talking about. You look at that list, and you look at the honorable mention list. Phenomenal players. I so, I mean, they're all terrific players. I mean, who would you knock off? You should have been on second team. You should have been on first team. But uh, those guys are involved in the Was that ballot difficult for you once you got beyond the first team? I, I don't ever look at it as difficult. I, mm -hmm. I just vote for who I think deserves to be on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's differences of opinion. You know, I, my guys in different places. Brandon, you've talked all year about the depth and how deep this team is. Do you think it makes you uniquely positioned for the sort of four wins in four days that you ultimately lose? I, I definitely think it helps. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you're if you're in a seven-man rotation, for example, I mean, it's going to be hard. Uh, you know, you're going to slow down in, in the course of, of four days. Uh, the other thing is, as teams prepare for us, you no matter what, you, what game you look at, sometimes there's just different guys on the floor that are producing. It's not always the same two top scorers and the same four players doing the same things. You know, I, I go back to their to their run we made in the Nebraska game. You know, it was Dave, it was Oglesby, it was Clemens, uh, McCabe, I think. I don't remember who the five guys were that were out there. And then, and then he put Woodbury back in, he was terrific. You know, he was great before, but that that lineup really clicked for us, and uh, it's been like that all year long. It seems like guys on this team really accept their role. Like Anthony is starting for 13, then he goes back to the bench, but it doesn't seem to really impact. No, it doesn't. No, no and, and, and <coughs> one thing I think, Pat, is you know, you watch the guys on the bench when that particular group was making the run. They were going crazy, mm -hmm. you know, looking for each other. There's no like, wow, I should be out there. Which will be back in. If there are guys who are rolling, hey, that's great for us. And if if we're in there, they'll be they'll be who they're for me. What's the next step for Dave going to the next season? 